Hello friends, it's been a while. Today's video is a short extension of the video I've done a while ago about configuring a monitoring channel in Reason. To give you a short summary of the video, it was about creating a separate monitoring channel so that you have all of all of the monitoring plugins like uh, analyzer, analyzers, uh, frequency isolation plugins, uh, room correction plugins, etc. in one place and you send both your mix uh, and your reference tracks through that channel so that you have a consistent monitoring situation but at the same time the reference tracks are not being affected by the mastering chain. In that video I have um, showed uh, the way I use SPAN. In case you don't know what SPAN is, it is a spectrum analyzer plugin. It is very widely used uh, within the audio community. Uh, it's free. And there's a paid version, but I use a free version. And um, one of its features is that it allows to display multiple signals at the same time, uh, superimposed uh, onto each other. And um, after the video came out, I have received multiple requests from people to show how to configure Span to, 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 to use that feature. Let me demonstrate uh, what I mean. If we open Span, we see two curves here. The gray one is the frequency response curve of my mix uh, and the this line graph is actually coming from the reference track so this is it, it uh, represents the frequency response curve of one of the references and I have three references currently in this project and I can see them this way together with the uh, with my with my mix and um, I find this um, I find this very useful to to have this as an additional visual feedback, of course, you should always use your ears uh, to listen to what's going on in your mix. But uh, as a visual aid, this is very useful. I find it very useful, at least. So let's let's talk about how to configure Span for to use this feature. Now, mind you, I use Reason, of course, and um, the signal routing will be different if you're using an other DAW. But as far as uh, configuration of the span itself, uh, it should be the same. So let's take a look at the routing first. In Reason we need to turn the rack to see its um, inputs and outputs. And span has main input where we send our master signal and it has additional inputs uh, 3 through 8 which are used for reference tracks. So input 3 is reference 1 left, input 4 is uh, reference one right, input five is reference two left, and so on. Once you configure, as I said, if you're not using Reason, then you have to use the capabilities of your DAW to create this routing. But uh, once you have connected it in such a way, uh, we can uh, proceed to set up the span itself. Uh, the first thing that we need to do in span is to Let's, let's actually load the default preset. So that this is the way Span looks like when you install it. You may have a different skin, but essentially all the settings are actually default now. So the first thing we need to do is to enable all of the input channels because by default Span only listens to one and two. So we need to enable three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I also find it very useful to name the channels so that I know where the input is coming from. Main left, main right, reference one left, reference one right, reference two, and reference three. Done. The next thing we need to configure are the group assignments. The group is what actually gets displayed here in the visualization area. And uh, the first group is your main input, the second group is your first reference, the third group is your second reference, and so on. Uh, it's also very helpful to rename them. Main, reference 1, reference 2, reference 3. Done. 
So now we have inputs enabled, we name them, and we also have groups assigned. And if we go to this drop down menu, we can actually see our reference tracks here. Now that we have everything configured, we should be able to see both signals displayed at the same time. Now, it doesn't look exactly like the way I have it configured. And to, to change the visual appearance of, uh, of these um, uh, curves, you can um, use this drop-down box. This drop-down box controls what you are con currently configuring. So for the main, we can, for example, change the color. Uh, if we then go to reference one, we go to this option and disable field display. I only want to see the line, I don't want to see the field display. And we repeat this for reference 2 and for reference 3. And now it, if we go back to main, now we see it more, now, now it looks more like um, my configuration. Before I end this video, I would like to leave you with another bonus tip on how to configure a uh, span with a more sort of correct settings, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, at least more correct in the sense of um, using it in a monitoring channel to monitor the whole mix. The thing is that by default, you can see that there is a lot of detailization and uh, a lot of movement here, so it's not always easy to understand uh, what's happening uh, in your in your um, monitoring uh, channel you want to see more sort of um, average values uh, not so much uh, detail and to, to to change that you again for every every group you go back to this configuration wheel and here you can feel free to copy my settings but essentially you are increasing the resolution of the graph you are reducing the the refresh time of the graph so that it doesn't jump very very fast it shows you more average values you also smooth it out so you don't see individual peaks and um, you also expand the the range so that you, you see the entire spectrum. Here I have it from 10 Hz all the way to 26.5 kHz. Once you do this, you can save it as a preset. Span has multiple presets architecture. It's, it's a bit confusing, but these presets are for these settings. So you save them, save them, and then you can recall them here. Now you go to your reference and you can do the same thing. For example, you can leave the values as they were for the main, but you just disable the field display and you save it as a reference preset. And then for each for each reference track, you can call that preset so that you don't have to configure every reference uh, individually. And when you have everything configured as you as you as you like, then there's a global preset option here where you can go ahead and save the entire configuration as as your preset that you can recall at any time. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. Have a great day. Bye bye.